So this yeah. afternoon we are highlighting um, about two districts. We have Chair Roscoe Cooper, who is here with the chair of the Henrico County School Board. And we also have Christy Kinsella, school board representative from the Brooklyn District. Would you all like to give a welcome to the, the students and families that are here? Well, I'm gonna let ladies go first, so let Miss Kinsella go first. I just like to say hi to everyone and to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. The board has been looking forward to hearing from the students. I know Mrs. Ogburn and I did a pilot a few weeks ago with students and actually put forth three student recommendations uh, for consideration for fall virtual learning at the board meeting on July 23rd. So I'm excited about what uh, recommendations or ideas will come forward today. Thank you for joining. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, I'm excited as well to be participating in this wonderful opportunity to hear from and to see our wonderful students from across the district. And so I'm just excited to be a part of it. So look forward to the conversation. Awesome. Thank you all so much. You know, I have to give a special shout out to our school board members who really made sure that we had time to hear from students. You know, we're often hearing from parents and, you know, community members, but we know that students are really the center of what we do and why we do what we do. And so I'm just as excited to see that we have so many students who are here in attendance with us. And we're truly um, looking forward to hearing more of your perspective. Today is really about us listening to you. Um, I know you all are often listening to us, but we want to change that change. We want to shift that today. And so, um, as I mentioned earlier, if you have access to the to the chat, there's a sign up sheet. Um, and so feel free to, to sign up if you have a comment or even a question that you would like to share. Now, prior to today, we did um, have a few people who sent in questions. And so what we'll do to kind of warm up things, I'll ask just one or two questions to our school board members and they'll be able to respond um, based on, you know, based on their knowledge and background. We also have some of our amazing staff who are on the call. And so I would like to give them a shout out too. They will be here in the conversation and may also chime in to support. And so I'm really excited. Um, we have um, Principal Dwight Van Rossum, who was with Chamberlain Elementary. Um, a little bit about him. He is the Bobcat principal, a huge VCU Rams basketball fan. And he loves to rock his bow ties, especially on Tuesdays for Bow Tie Tuesday. So again, Principal Rossum, if you're on, feel free to wave and, and come on video. We also have Principal Michael Jackson, principal of Hermitage High School. Um, what, he's also entering his 21st year in education, and he's a 1996 graduate of Hermitage, where he's now the proud, now the proud principal. Roll pride. Next up, we have Stacy Austin, who is our, well, I'll, I'll read exactly what he said. You'll get to know a lot about him. Um, when I'm not playing sports, I'm watching sports or thinking about sports. But I can do that and still be thinking about schools, <laughs> teaching, and learning. I'm a huge fan of student voice and proud to be one of the directors of elementary education. Students first, everything else second. And last but certainly not least, we also have Mr. Mac Benton. He's in his 35th year with Henrico Schools, and he said he will never wish for another snow day. He's the Director of Workforce and Career Development and believes that every student should leave school enrolled, enlisted, and or employed. The Career and Technical Education Center helps to make sure that that happens. So again, young people, you are surrounded by um, some leaders here in your school and also on the school board. And so again, we ask that you um, come out and speak on the mic a little bit later, fill out the fill out the sign up sheet. So I am looking forward to jumping in. We had a robust was, conversation earlier and we're looking forward to the same um, this afternoon. And I actually will start with you, uh, Mrs. Kinsella. Um, the questions that are shared will, are all questions that have come directly from students in your district. So the first question for you, I have a concern for what will happen when somebody does not have reliable technology or good internet connection. 
How will they how will they contact the teacher to tell him or her this? Every teacher was using different methods of communication last spring, be it Schoology, email, regular email, and it was extremely confusing on how to connect with the teacher. OK, it sounds like a few layers of questions in there. Um, when we start school officially on September 8th, virtually, um, we will hopefully all of our students will have the appropriate uh, either hotspots and laptops, Chromebooks. Um, so once you get in school, I would imagine teachers on the first day for during the first week will set up expectations in each class and they will establish whatever guidelines students need in terms of to communicate with them. Um, and if you should have tech difficulty, um, the technology hubs uh, won't be like they have been this summer at your schools and each school building, I would imagine, would communicate those standards differently. Do either of our, my principals have anything to say as to how technology issues would work if you have issues in the fall? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Um, you know, Tech Hubs will be here to help out with any uh, hardware issue. If anyone does not have access to the internet, we can um, apply for a mobile hotspot and make sure all families have everything they need in order to be successful. Awesome. Thank you both. Thank you both for that insight. Next, Chair Cooper, we will go over to you. This is a question that came in um, from the Fairfield District. Will we see a return to school in the near future? And what can we do as students to help get back into class? And, and you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. So um, as, as we all know, we're still in the midst of this global pandemic and um, we have made the decision to do the first nine online. Um, and we talk about virtual um, synchronistic, asynchron asynchronistic um, learning and teaching will take place and transpire, um, making sure that our students as well as our staff are not in front of a computer all day long, but are able to have um, variations that um, kind of break up the day so that they don't have to be stuck in front of a computer. And we will be monitoring um, the situation um, very closely. And we're hoping to return to in-person instruction as soon as it is safe to do so. Um, we're gonna be working this first marking period to bring small groups of students or individual groups of students in for limited in-person instruction and support. And so we just look forward to making progress and hopefully um, we can be back in the building um, on a more robust basis uh, sooner than later when and only when it's safe to do so. Yes, thank you. Thank you and I, we, we all appreciate that safety first approach as well. Christy Kinsella, Mrs. Kinsella, I'm going to go to you for another question. Um, so there's an art class at Glen Allen where you assist other students with disabilities. How will classes like these work since we cannot be hands on? Well, as we've mentioned before, <clears throat> when we go back to school virtually in the fall, it will be different and it will look different and no doubt that this particular art class that a student has asked about um, falls within that category. Um, while we understand that nothing can take the place potentially of in-person interactions such as this art class, um, it's my understanding that each each building each um, each building is coming up with their own ideas as to how what these programs would look like and how they would operate. Dr. Jackson, I think this is specifically a high school question. If you'd like to jump in and add anything to that. Uh, yes, ma'am, you're exactly right. Each building will be a little bit different, but it'll be based on who can return into the building. Um, a lot of the conversation that we've had with teachers is with the hands-on activities, we may have to look at pushing those activities to later in the school year, um, hopefully when we return. If not, we'll set up a, um, a format where we can um, distribute materials and have students um, complete hands-on activities at home. And unfortunately, the uh, the the person, the student to student interaction, um, that is something we're not able to do just at this point. But we hope to look forward to doing that in, the, in some time in the near future. Okay. Thank you both. 
And so we'll do one more question um, that's directly to you, Chair Cooper. But before I do that, um, I'm excited to see that some of our students have started to sign up because they want to speak. And so I'm going to share the first three names. If you all can just start to get yourselves ready, because after this question, we'll really go to this open mic format. Um, so first we'll have Drew J. Then we'll have Jacob and then we'll have Sh Shoria M. And another thing I'm requesting too, if I do not pronounce your name correctly, make sure that you correct me so that I do pronounce it correctly, okay? Um, but after we go to this next question, we will hear from Drew J, followed by Jacob, and then Shoria M. Okay, so here's another question. Um, Chair Cooper, how will working parents be able to help kids during the virtual learning? Um, that is a very good question. Um, as a parent myself of a, a child in elementary as well as one in high school, um, I fall into that category as well. Um, so our goal and our desire and our hope is that all of our students are working uh, feverishly um, and intently and intentionally uh, to become um, life ready, um, which means that they're honing in uh, the six C's that we stand upon as foundational for our uh, student learner profile, quality character, um, global citizen, communicator, collaborator, and then the thinkers, critical and creative. And so we're working um, to help our students hopefully to be independent, organized, and motivated learners through um, the premise of our um, Life Ready um, Six C's for Henrico Learner Profile. Uh, with the support and guidance of um, virtual school teams to assist the parents as well as the students. Um, that's inclusive of, but not limited to our teachers, our support staff, as well as our able and capable administrators. And the goal is, and the hope is to set up the students for success during um, this virtual school day, as well as provide the necessary resources that they'll need to get through the day. Um, we also wanna assist the parents in understanding what's um, so imperative and important to set up the right, quote unquote, at home conditions for virtual learning. Um, so we're going to be sharing some tips on that um, in the near future. So we look at it as a collaborative partnership between the individual schools, um, the virtual school team, teacher support staff, administrators, as well as assisting the parents and the students to be successful, one with the environment that's at home, as well as giving our students the necessary supports that they need. Um, to be successful as well. So we're going to be building that out um, and we'll be sharing specific tips in the near future as far as that's concerned. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you both for um, answering some of those earlier questions that came in. And I think what we want to do now is really redirect our, our energy and focus to the young people who are here and that are really signing up because they have a lot of things to say. Um, and so again, um, young people know that you can ask a question or you can just share a comment. And so we are going to start off with Drew. I ask that everyone again continue to keep their um, keep their microphones muted. And then when I call your name, I'm asking you to unmute. And if you'd like to come on video to um, to share your comment. So Drew J. Drew J, if you are still here in the room, if you can unmute your mic and share your question or comment with the group. Hello. Hello. Was that Drew? Okay. All right, Drew, we are going to go to the next name. Um, but if you come back, let us know or, or sign back up on the sheet. Next, we have Jacob. I don't have a last name for Jacob, but Jacob, if you signed up pretty early, um, you can now unmute your, um, your computer and share your comment or question. Jacob. All right. I think somebody's tricking me. Somebody did this last time too. We're gonna to keep going, Drew J was not in the room, no Jacob. Let's try for the third, third time's a charm, right? Shoria M, if Shoria is here, will you unmute your mic and share any comment or questions that you have? Hello. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but- Yes. Can, okay, so what I, I have two things that I kind of want to touch on. First off, 
is do we have to in class do we have to have face cams on at all times that's more of just a question do we have to have face cams all right um and then the second thing is for cheating and i know that hcps is pretty big on cheating will we be installing software on each computer because they those things like let's say honor lock uh, they kind of they record more than some people would be comfortable with is what is your stance on that you're on mute we can't hear your answer I'm sorry, you all. So it sounds like it's a two part question, right? The first the first is, do you have to be on camera, you know, when you when you're in class? And so someone can speak to that. And I believe the second question, and did you say it is about possibly cheating um, on on work or assignments? Will you kind of rephrase this, the second part of your question? Shoria? So what I'm saying is there's software out there that some on like summer summer sign summer classes used for cheating, right? They they installed on your computer and they would record everything on that computer. Okay. What is your stance on that? Okay. All right. Thank you for clarifying. Does anyone want to jump in and respond to that to those questions? Well, on, <clears throat> on the first question of, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, student cameras, they will be expected to be on at all time during instruction, but you can have a background in the background, uh, kind of like I'm using right now, just to show you can uh, disguise your background. As far as the software goes, uh, at point in time, I don't believe we've discussed any software. However, the student, the student code of conduct is expected to be followed at all times, just like you would in school. So uh, I don't know if Michael, if you want to add anything to that or not. Um, sure, I can. Yeah, you're exactly right uh, with the camera and we um, we are following the HCPS code of student conduct. Um, I am familiar with honor lock um, for the summer courses. We have not explored that as of yet, but students are expected to uh, to maintain integrity by following the code of conduct and all assessments um, while we're in this virtual platform. OK, thank you. All right. Thank you all. So the next three, and I'll just call off names so that we can all prepare. Um, the Volkner family, thank you all for coming back. I know you are on the first list and we couldn't get to you. So we'll have the Volkner family, um, Sankirtana, and then Jacob Chin. And so if you all will prepare your comments, but we will now go to the Volkner family. If you could un unmute your mic and share any questions or comments that you have. Hey, I should probably show up as Andrea Freeman, but I'm here with Thomas and Hunter Volkner, who are an eagle and a hawk. Um, so we had the question that, first of all, we just want to thank you guys for really caring about the uh, health of our teachers and administrators, as well as the children and the families. We think this was a good decision. We know it's tough for a lot of families. But um, my crew is actually okay with the idea of virtual learning. Um, but their question that they wanted me to put forth is there are times that there might be interest in spending some more one on one time with a teacher because that can be really valuable. Uh, we've heard that the teachers will be in the schools during the day. Is it possible to schedule some time to go in and have some one on one time with teachers or will they have office hours? That's our question. Great questions. Who would it like was, to respond? Mm -hmm. I, I, I could just start and say those are great questions. Um, my understanding of what the one-on-one -on -one looks like is in the initially it will be um, when it's safe to do so during the first nine, it would be a K, K to three that would come back in the building with some uh, additional our English uh, learners as well as some of our special education um, community would come back in a building as to one-on-ones with teachers. I would like either a director or a principal to jump in and give guidance as to what that looks like in your building, what you've been told. 
I'd be happy to cover that. Um, so again, this is Dr. Stacy Austin, elementary director. I just have to take one quick second to tell all these young people how proud I am of them. The fact that you are on this Zoom call, that means you're a leader because leadership does not have a name next to it or an age. It has action next to it. So I'm very proud of you. Um, as far as one-to-ones, we, we are encouraging those to be virtual. And so we have actually built that into the virtual schedule. So um, when instruction that is for all the students has finished for the day, there is gonna be a built-in time where, uh, where you can reach out or the teacher can reach out to an individual student during the school day. There'll be built-in opportunities at the elementary level where you can talk directly with your teacher or direct, directly to a staff member while you are learning. And so, so those, those small group interactions will be there, but they will be virtual. I'd also like to um, address teachers can choose to work from the building or they can choose to work from home however they feel safe and most comfortable so we're, we're trying to make sure that we get every student exactly what they need until we're allowed to come back safely thank you and thanks for hosting these thank you all right next we have sankratana hi Hi. So I have three questions. The first one is, um, this year are we going to have maps or maps this year? And, and, and do us a favor, ask all three of your questions and we'll remember them. So ask us all three. Okay. So do we have maps this year? And the second question is, if you're going to a new school, how are you going to contact um, our new teachers after registration? And the third question is, what? Well, how do we do exams or tests because people cheat with their notebooks while testing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thinking ahead, I love it. I love it. Thank you for those amazing three questions. Um, and they're very different, and I'm sure that there are different leaders on the call that can respond. Who wants to jump in where? I, I can take the first one again. Uh, so the maps for everybody that's on the call, that's our NWEA growth measure assessment. And uh, and we are not going to be doing the, this year. So check that one off your list on tests that you will be required to take when you come back. However, we are going to be very excited to find out what you've learned on your own. So we're going to be looking for assessments as soon as we start school that will give us an indication of how smart you've gotten over the summer. Um, I'll take the new student question as well. Right as you speak, your principals are meeting with their teachers and they are they are coming up with creative ways, new ways ways to reach out and grab you, um, especially if you're a new student. We're still going to have new student orientations. They're just going to look different. They're going to look um, ways that um, can keep us all safe, but it will also give you a chance to get to know your new school. And then I'll, I'll even take the cheating one as well. That seems to be a, a common theme here. I, I will tell you, we've been teaching our kindergartners all the way, even preschoolers through 12th, about digital citizenship. And we've had lessons that specifically speak to integrity. And so uh, we are counting, as Dr. Jackson said earlier, we're counting on every student to be a good citizen and we are counting on them to do the right thing. And uh, there will be some measures that teachers will use and principals will use in order to correct someone that may make a bad choice. So all of that will be the same, whether we're virtual or in person. Awesome. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Mm -hmm. well. for those questions and for and for those responses. I just love how you all are being so thoughtful and, and intentional about all of the different things to consider with with virtual learning. So next we have Jacob Chin, but I'm going to announce the following three names as well. Um, so if Baton will get prepared, Layla Campbell and Diego. So you all are up next after Jacob Chin. So Jacob, will you unmute your mic? Um, if the coronavirus like cases are getting like lower and um, if we get to go back to school, do we still need to like stay uh, six feet apart and like wear a mask is and like um like use hand sanitizer for like lunch periods and everything? 
Great point. Um, Mrs. Kinsella or Chair Cooper, would you all like to address that one? Well, yeah, again, as I stated earlier, we're going to be monitoring um, the expectations from the CDC, from the government, um, as well as um, our community health organizations. And so when and we are able to go back in, we don't know exactly what that would look like because we can't speak that far in advance, but it will fall under the purview of what the expectations are from a, from from our, our our leaders who are helping to steer us through this process. So we will make sure again that the health and safety of our teachers, our students, and our communities are at the forefront. If it does mean you know continue to wearing the mask and washing the hands with hand sanitizer as well as soap and water, practicing social distancing, we'll do what we need to do to ensure safety of our students, staff, and community. Yeah. All right. I would just like to piggyback on that for Jacob, that a lot of that would determine which phase we're in, uh, whether it's a phase three guidance or beyond phase three, um, Jacob, which we don't determine that would come down from the governor as to what overall phase we're in and then whatever protocols for safety we would follow. You know, right now we're in a phase three and the numbers are higher and that's why we've chosen virtual to go back just so to give you a little bit more information as to as to how we would make that decision. Okay. Thank you. Next we have Baton. Baton, are you here? Baton, and if you are, you can, you know, unmute yourself and share your question or comment. And if not, I will keep going down the list because it's a long list. Okay, so I'll keep going. Um, next, we have Layla Campbell. Layla, if you are still here in the room, if you can unmute your mic, share your comment or question with our school board and our school leaders. No questions at this time. The question has already been answered. Thank you all so much for this platform for our students. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Diego, I thought I saw Diego on my screen. Diego, are you still here? And I don't have a, a, a last name, but I do see a Diego Martinez on my screen. Did you sign up, Diego, to speak? So, do, so during virtual schools, do we actually get Mark Tardy or anything? Great question. Yes, Diego, you do. Just like accountability will be different in the fall than it was in the spring. It will be required in the fall as so many things were optional in the spring. In the fall, accountability, whatever, um, if you're at a middle school or high school, what school are you in, Diego? I'm going to Freeman High School. Okay, so as a high schooler, if you were going to be in math at, at nine o'clock in the morning in a building mm -hmm. before, you're going to be in math at home virtually um, and you'll be required to check in. Should you have certain circumstance um, that don't allow you to be face to face while the live instruction is going on, um, then there would be recorded assignments for you to do later. And I'll let one of our uh, high school principals, Dr. Jackson, talk about what high school looks like in, in terms of attendance, virtual just learning. to give you more. In terms of virtual learning? Hey, wait, in terms of what? Oh, just to give you more about attendance and how it works, whether, um, because I know in some cases, some of our students that, that may be on this call um, may not be, may have special circumstance such that they can't always do things live and how that attendance would work. And as a board member, I don't know those, to be honest, I don't know those details like our principals do. Right, thank okay. you. Yes, that, um, you are exactly correct. And attendance is gonna take place exactly as if it would if you were in the building. So imagine you going yourself going to school physically, you're just doing the same thing virtually. Everything stays 
just about the same. Um, we'll make some concessions and some arrangements if you have something going on. Um, the big piece about this is communication. Um, you really got to communicate with your teachers and your administrators, your counselors um, more than ever this year. And we have to do the same thing for you. Um, so we're really going to focus on communicating and making sure everyone has everything they need in order to be successful. So in any question that you may have, um, apply the same question as if you were in the building. And it's going to be a very similar answer here in this virtual world. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next we have, next we have, is that Taylor? Taylor White? Hi, how are you guys? Hello. So um, I'm just going to be talking about three, um, three points that I have but before. Um, I'm Taylor White. I'm from the IB program at Henrico High School, and I'm representing the Henrico Justice Group, which have led protests through the last few months, I don't know if you've heard of us, um, about just equitable change from Henrico County. So um, I'm just going to be talking about three points, um, privatized funding and the PTA, um, reforming specialty centers, and then uh, uh, having a uniform countywide definition of racial, racial discrimination in the code of conduct. So one of the first things that we um, kind of wanted to change is the funding rules in Henrico County for the PTA. So what we want is um, for all booster programs to have a fundraising cap. Anything over that cap would be taxed a certain percent. Um, from what we've seen with the PTA, I don't want to bring in the whole East and West end conversation into it, but it's kind of important. Um, in the West and a lot of the PTA is very funded due to the amount of wealth that is surrounding those schools and as well as the businesses. While in the East end, it's a less wealthier area as well as we don't have that many business businesses to support our PTAs and our schools in general. And so we want um, we what we would like is for uh, schools to have a fundraising cap and then once they once they would reach that cap they'll be taxed a certain percentage and that'll go into an high, a high school community pool pool and then from that high school community pool it will be equitably funded um, throughout the county on who needs it most uh, just I'm just kind of going to skim over them and then uh, I would we would be interested in having a meeting with the school board members privately so we can go into more specifics but um, the second point that I wanted to mention is the reform reformation of uh, specialty centers and making them more accessible for low-income students, students of color, and students from the East End. And so from my experience as an East End student, although I'm um, in Henrico High School for the IV program, I am zoned to Henrico. When I was um, in Laburnum Elementary, I didn't get introduced to the IB program at Fairfield until I was in fifth grade. The only reason I knew about that beforehand is because of my cousin who was in the IB program. And so while um, from kids from the West End, I've heard that they've been literally touring IB schools since they were, they toured IB schools when they were in fifth grade, but they've learned about the IB program and got more prepared for it, maybe fourth, third grade. And so obviously that's not fair. And so we want um, that promotion to happen across the county. Um, no matter the school, elementary school um, students touring IB schools at the same time, at the same rate, um, especially also with our middle schools as well. I know I didn't learn about specialty centers until I was in eighth grade. Um, it was a bit more promoted because I was in the IB program at Fairfield. But, um, you know, while uh, Western students, they learned more about specialty centers from the start. And so like I said, that's obviously not fair. So we want to have that change and um, create a quota of spots in specialty centers for students of dis different districts in order to promote a balance of West End and East End students in all the centers. And then the last point I'm going to be talking about is um, having a uniform countywide definition of racial discrimination and a uniform consequence of cases for racial discrimination. Um, so that's basically just making sure that if uh, discrimination does occur in our schools or in our specialty center, there's something definite that's going to happen and that we can define those, that discrimination happening as well. So I don't, I keep bringing my examples into it, but that's kind of the best way I can describe it. I know with my uh, experiences as a black student in the IB program at Henrico, I've- Yo, oh my God!
I've experienced a lot of racial discrimination with just the students in general. And when we go to administration, it seems like nothing will be done. And this isn't just a my grade thing. This has been happening since my cousin has been in the IB program and she's now graduated. So obviously this is a reoccurring thing that we need to need to fix basically and it's kind of ridiculous how as soon as we're too scared to go to administration because we know that when we will uh nothing will happen so we just want to have a uniform consequence for the cases of racial discrimination in our schools and also just bringing this up like i said before henrico justice would just want to have a meeting with the school board members um to basically just discuss what we want and how you guys want to fix that and thanks i yield my time thank you so much taylor I appreciate it. Um, took you long enough. And if we can all just make sure that our phones are muted so that we can be respectful of each other's time and when and when we're talking, that would be amazing. Thank you. Ms. Gonzalez, since she's at Henrico, can I speak first? You don't mind? Sure. I, I didn't know if you knew that we had scheduled, um, we have um, asked them to uh, schedule a meeting with Henrico Justice Group. Um, two by two by ones with board members since the five of us cannot be together um, unless it's an official board meeting, unless they wanted to come present formally to us as a group that if they wanted to meet with us privately, I just want to disclose that. And then I do have a couple things to say as to policy, since I sit on the policy committee and as to funding. But yes, I yield to you. Yeah, you, you can definitely. I want to say again, as a, uh, a young lady who attends Henrico High School in the IB program, but is also, as you stated, zoned um, for Henrico. So that simply says you do live in the Fairfield District. Um, I do want you to know that um, discussions are being held um, on the school board level to Dr. Cashwell, as well as administration in regard to the identification of um, students for potentially um, um, uh, advanced placement courses, as well as the IB program, trying to come up with the barometer to ensure that we are equally uh, exposing our students um, to the opportunities and the possibilities, I mean, in regards to advanced placement courses, as well as IB courses from the earliest age possible, so that they can kind of prepare themselves emotionally, mentally, and academically um, for the rigorous courses. And as you stated, to ensure when you talk about spaces in the IB program, and you look at the different um, high schools, different schools that feed into them, where the students uh, reside and where they originate as far as their home school. We do want to make sure that we are um, basing our decisions on making sure that equity and diversity are inclusive in allowing individuals, students to be in our uh, IB program, as well as advanced course, advanced placement courses as well. And um, before Ms. Kinsella speaks about what kind of policy, I just want to say that our student code of conduct is currently under review right now. Um, and we are looking at it to ensure that uh, we provide an environment across the county, um, as well as the language in our student code of conduct that is safe, that's inclusive, culturally, and responsive to all of our students, regardless of, of race, of creed, of color. And so, and gender as well. So we are looking at that and we are ensuring that we will have language that speaks to equity, diversity, and opportunity. And then I wanna say quickly, um, we all aware of the recent acts of violence, of bigotry, and even hate and racism, um, so, social um, injustice and systematic racism across our nation. And so one thing that we as a county and as a division have, in, have tried to ensure through our Department of Equity, Diversity, and Opportunity, as well as our family engagement, that we are listening, um, that we are engaging in the conversations, and we will make the necessary changes to ensure that all of our staff, all of our students, all of our families in the community feel respected, feel appreciated, have environments that are safe, that are inclusive, and are culturally responsive. So just know that we are conscious, we are cognizant, we are keenly aware, and we're doing what we need to do to make sure that it happens. So Ms. Kinsella, you wanna add something on policy? Sure. I just want to say the board, it has not yet come before the board as it's been in um, committee. There's a, a a group called the Policy Committee, and we're currently going through all of the policies for Henrico County Public Schools. Um, and we actually have added a racial discrimination policy, um, and board members have not yet seen it as it hasn't come out of 
uh, the policy committee yet. And then um, I just want to reiterate what Reverend Cooper said um, about supporting the access and opportunity and making sure things are equitable across Henrico County Public Schools for every single student. Um, that that is a it's it's a priority for everyone um, in Henrico P County Public Schools, and we appreciate you bringing that to our attention. As to your funding, um, I understand exactly. Um, how you would perceive that the funding across our Henrico County Public Schools is not equitable. I do. Our PTAs, however, are independent 501c3s, which that's a it's a financial term for when you donate money or when you raise money to a 501c3, um, there are certain rules and restrictions that go with that as to um, disclosing exactly what you're raising the funds for. But when we meet with you, um, we'll be happy to go over the funding and your concerns and maybe how we can work more with some of our community partners um, to ensure that all of our schools are getting the resources that they need. And I think that that is your concern, right, Taylor, that all of our schools have the resources that they need to be successful? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. No, thank you for bringing all of this to our attention. And as I said earlier, um, the first session um, of Hen uh, Henrico Justice brought it forward and is going to be scheduling a meeting with the board members. So just thank you so much. Okay, thank you guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Taylor, for that those thoughtful questions. And um, I think as Sherry Cooper mentioned, I've also heard from Henrico Justice over the last few months, and I've been just thoroughly impressed by um the the clear focus that you all have on meeting your goals so thank you for speaking this this um this afternoon in our next group we have sophie lacy ava battle and jackson c um, and so we will start with sophie lacy if you are still on the call you can unmute, unmute your mic and share your questions or comments thanks um hi i'm sophie lacy i'm in middle school at Humby creek I was just wondering when the schedules are coming out. Great question. I know you all are getting prepared. Who wants to jump in on that? Uh, I can address that one. Um, looks as though all these schedules will come out a little bit, uh, probably a week earlier than they would normally come out. So everybody's just well aware. Um, so probably the um, end of August, um, probably two weeks before school starts. So you can be able to check uh, Power School and Parent Portal at that time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ava Battle. Ava, if you are here, you can unmute your mic and share Hi, any questions. You? Um, I'm Ava Battle, and I do have a couple of questions. Um, so my first question is, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so my first question is, um, with us getting our schedules, how should we be able to transfer classes without being late for another class? Or how I could put it this way. If our computer or phone or whatever we may use, the internet is acting up, how will we let the teacher know that that was going on if the laptop is still acting up? My second question is, um, I've heard about this from a couple of other teachers. Mm -hmm. Uh, how is it possible for them to take us on field trips, I guess they would yes. say? Like, Jeez. having all of the students meet up somewhere or whatever the case may be. Those are all my questions. Who would like to respond to Ava's questions? 
Well, I'll start with the first part as far as the computer acting up. Um, between classes, there will be a scheduled break, just like in, in real, a normal day. Uh, and I believe it's a 10 minute break scheduled between classes. I know most of the teachers have ways of communicating with the students via text messages or whatever. I'm sure if there's an issue with your computer, uh, I, there will, the teachers will work with you and, and make sure that they, that you have a means to communicate. But I think the important thing to remember is the expectation is to be there at the start of the class, ready to go, just like you would on a normal school day. Thank you so much. And then your next trip was your next question was about field trips. Ava? Yes, ma'am. I tell you what, I'm going to refer to Dr. Austin on that. Are you referring to the elementary level? Elementary, middle, high school, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Dr. Austin, are you still on? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, basically during our, our time of predominantly virtual, the field trips just won't be possible. And so, because the reason we are predominantly virtual is to keep everyone safe and distance and um, and healthy. And so uh, until we're able to return in person, field trips and experiences will have to be virtual. Now, there are some robust virtual field trips that um, have been developed from some of our partners. I know um, a lot of our students use the Smithsonian as, uh, as an example to experience some museums, some artwork from a virtual environment. So. Uh, so the basic answer is we'd love to have you on a field trip, but until we can have you all back in person safe, those are on pause. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. So next up we have Jason C, but to prepare the, the following group, um, we'll have McKenna, Behan K, and Martha. And so we'll have Jason C, and then we'll go to the next group. I'm sorry, Jackson C. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about that. It's it's fine. Uh, hello. I'm I'm Jackson Campbell. I I got a home in middle, and like what I was wondering, I this doesn't exactly affect me, but for band classes, what are the people that have like big instruments like tubas and baritones and stuff like that? What are they going to do? Because we also have to play together. A great point, Jackson. Jackson, my understanding, um, and I'll let some principals jump in as well, maybe Dr. Jackson, um, is that chorus and band are going to look very different this year. As we've said before, with virtual learning, we're going to be creative as to how things work. And then at the school level, Dr. Jackson, you would have more detail about what it looks like. Uh, yes, ma'am, Jackson, that's a great question because um, all of our students don't have access to instruments. So uh, another question might be, well, you know, how do I how do I gain access? So we're going to still have an opportunity for students to come to school and pick up their instruments prior to school beginning. So you will actually have it at home and then your teachers have been creative enough to develop um, interactive lessons where you're able to play in concert um, with your with your bandmates um, during that scheduled time. I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I would love to observe a couple of um, virtual band classes because I, I can't wait to, to see and hear what that looks like. I also have one more that I just thought of. Um, I, I forgot about it earlier. Um, what do I do for chat? Because my, my, my administrator disabled chat for me. So is that on, on, this, on this call you're, you're talking about? It's We've on a, anything, anything. Oh, in general, even just yeah. on your computer. Yes, yeah, yeah. so um, I, I went back to one of my older Microsoft team things and I still can chat. OK, yep. So that will probably be a technology question. Um, OK, and one of our staff person, pay attention to the chat right now. Someone's going to drop a link for uh, an email for who you can contact and we'll make sure that you get looped in. So that's fixed. But you can you see chat in this group, Jackson? I'm sorry, what? You have access to chat in this group, correct? 
No. Well, I can see it, but I can't do anything to it. Okay. Well, Jackson, we have your first and last name. We'll email you, okay? We'll okay. email you to make sure that we can address that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, you all, it's 2.55. We're approaching 3 o'clock. Um, we have about 12 more questions questions or just folks who want to make comment. I'm looking at our school board and our school leaders. I'm hopeful that you all will able, be able to stay around for a little bit longer so that we can get through those. Um, but we're we're on track. So this is a this is a good thing. Next up we have McKenna. McKenna S, if you are here, if you can unmute your mic and share your questions or comments with the group. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. So my name is McKenna Slough. I am a senior at the Center for Communications and Media Relations at Verona High School out in the East End. Um, so for students like me, how do you plan on handling the specialty centers that do a ton of hands-on learning? Because at my specialty center, we do a ton of filming, photography, editing with computers and a bunch of that type of equipment. Mac, did you want to answer that one? Yes, I'll be happy to. <clears throat> and, you know, with the classes like that, the hands on component is very valuable. Uh, but what our teachers have started doing, number one, is looking at the, co the competencies or the concepts that they're teaching, what can be done virtually, what's going to require some hands on. And with uh, moving forward, the plan is to have some limited face to face opportunities for students as we see how things go on a special basis, just like uh, if, for instance, and I'll use a, a, a different type of class, but for instance, masonry, if you're laying brick, you've got to put a brick in your hand and, and, and lay a brick. So we can teach about the mortar consistency and all that, but until you actually get there um, and the safety part, so there will be the virtual instruction up front and then limited face-to-face -face opportunities as we move forward. Okay, thank you so much. Next, we have Vihan K. Vihan, are you still here? That's me. Okay. What's your question or comment? I have two questions. The first question is, it's like, you know, when we started, it's like, you know, when coronavirus like started and we had to like do distance learning like, you know, they gave out, like, a packet to everyone. Or, like, do you, does the packet count as your first quarter grade? Are, are, you, are you saying the packet that we handed out, um, we put the emergency education plan in place, does that count? Yeah, that one. Well, no, that one, that one that one doesn't yeah, count. I want to know. That one doesn't count. That was an um, um, emergency plan that we put in place to um, basically uh, respond to our current uh, system in regards to um, trying to have information for retention um, and also review. Um, but the first nine weeks is going to be a lot more intentional um, and it will have expectations. So the work that you do in the, in the first nine weeks, they will be graded. That work will be graded. Okay, my second question is, like when the, you know how they've prepared the computers and for students to use? Well, like, when will it be distributed? Like, when we get them, can we, like, I'm talking about elementary. You know, they're giving out like Chromebooks for elementary, right? Well, like, do we get to keep the Chromebooks or do, do we have to like give them back once virtual learning is over? Um, I'm going to give it to our elementary school, our elementary um, director. He'll answer a question in regards to that for you. You got it, Vian. That's a great question. So, um, so there was a, a message sent to all the families about 
distribution. And so that's coming over in the next couple of days and weeks. And it depends on what grade you're going to be in. So, for instance, if you're in pre-kindergarten or kindergarten, you're actually going to get a tablet. If you're in first grade through uh, fifth grade for elementary, then you're going to get a Chromebook. And so and, and we, we want to make sure that that's a tool that you can use for virtual learning. So as long as we have virtual learning, you're going to have that tool. When we are able to return, we're committed to keeping that tool in your hands, but it would certainly be a part of what you're doing each day. Um, and of course, that, that would remain the property of the school system, but you would use it as a tool to learn each and every day. All right. Thank you for your questions. Yes, great questions, thank you. All right, next up we have Martha, but I'll share following Mar Martha, we'll have Jacob, Azan and Nora Yurima. So if you all can get prepared, but we will go to Martha next. Martha, if you're still on the call, you can unmute your microphone and share your question or comment. All right, if Martha is not there, I will go to Jacob. Jacob, I don't have a last name or initial for you, but Jacob, if you signed up and if you're still here, you're more than welcome to unmute and share your question or comment. Okay, so we'll keep going. And you know, it may be that some questions have been answered and that and that's fine too. Um, next we have, I believe it's Azion or Azon. Hamilton is the last name. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Um, Nora Yurima. Good Nora, afternoon. are you here? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I have a question. Okay. How long will virtual classes last? Very, very direct question. Any answers? How long will virtual class last? I well, wish we knew that answer, but I'm curious what you all what you all have to say. Well, again, we're committed to the first nine weeks online um, and we're going to like Ms. Kinsella said, and as I stated earlier, depends on what phase we're in as a state, as well as what the current um, climate is in regards to the pandemic. But I can say definitively, we will be online for the first nine weeks. Well, hopefully that was helpful, Nora. I have, a, I have a question. Nora, were you asking about elementary, middle school, or high school schedules? Middle. You're asking about middle school? Are you asking about what does the day look like or how long is each class? How long is each class? Okay. I have, I have a sample schedule from my child's middle school that said... Um, there, his school day is going to start 830 and with, uh, an advisory block and then, um, uh, uh, a math class, for example, may go from 910 to 1025. So that's kind of what you're looking at about that kind of each, each one is about an hour and 15 minutes. I apologize for misunderstanding her question. Thank you, Ms. Right. Kinsella. Well, no, I didn't. I, I wasn't sure. Is that yeah. an answer to your question, Nora? Nora, would you like more specifics? She, she said that was good. Okay. That was okay, I didn't hear. Sorry. And thank you because I didn't hear it that way either. So that's the beauty of having various, you know, voices and perspectives in the room. So thank you for catching that, Mrs. Kinsella. Okay. In our next group, we have... Anish, followed by Nash P. And we also have Vihan, but I think we heard from Vihan earlier. Um, and so we'll have Anish, Nash, and then Rishab M. So Anish, if you are here with us, you can unmute your mic, share your question and or your comment. Uh, hi, I just wanted to know how long classes will be for high school. 
Reverend Cooper, can we let Dr. Jackson take that? I'd be, I'd be more than happy to do. You're, you're welcome to, but <laughs> it's uh, 90 minutes, 90 minute courses for all high school credit courses, 90 minute classes for all high school minute courses. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right. And if you guys don't mind from an elementary perspective, in case anyone is wondering, um, elementary hours, if you are pre-K through second grade, your school day will start at 8 and end at 1235. If you are in third grade through fifth grade, so that's third, fourth, and fifth grade, it is 30 minutes longer than that, starting at 8 and ending at 1.05. And of course, that has all of the subjects all mixed in there. Thank you for both of those perspectives. What I'm about sure there middle are others. school? Oh, middle school. Do we have details around that? I can give those to the times. Hold on two seconds here. Okay. The middle school will actually start at 830 and run to uh, 315 or 315 to 330 is office hours. So basically the same time that you are, are there now. OK. All right. Thank you all. I'm, I'm excited to hear that so many are really looking forward to getting their minds around their schedule. And this is when that happens, right? In, in August, you're preparing your schedules and your mind about what the school year will be. So thank you for those questions, Nash, and to you all for those answers. Next, we have Nash. Nash P., if you are here, um, if you will unmute your, your, um, your microphone and share any questions or comments that you have for the group. And that is Nash P. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, we can. Yes, my, my question is really, uh, it was already answered. It was about the support uh, of the HCPS to the working parents. I know Oscar Cooper already talked about that initially. I have a follow-up question. There is a communication on the website uh, that says that the HCSP is look, exploring options for daytime child care, at least for the um, kids in the elementary school, correct? Right? So anybody has any additional information about their comments? I, I'll jump in and, and take that one. Um, you know, you're you're exactly right. We're exploring options um, really for staff and and families as well. We know that child care has been um, it's been a big issue, although we made the decisions and we, we needed to go virtual because of the health pandemic. There are many families that are facing challenges, whether it's them having to go into work and being essential workers, you know, one or two parents already working in the household or just having multiple children in the house. And so we are exploring those supports. While we don't have concrete details now, we are feverishly working on that. And I would say as soon as, you know, Hopefully next week we'll have a few more details, but we are working right alongside community looking to see how we can support our parents and families during this unique time. But thank you for, for noticing that and for your question. Thank you. All right. So the next group we have Rishab Mishra. Next week after Rishab, we have Tanisha P. Then we have April M. And so, Rishab, if you're still here, if you will unmute your mic and share your question or comment with the group. Okay. Rishab, going once, going twice. All right. Well, we'll keep moving. Thank you all for staying here with us. I know it's been an hour, and I know for me sometimes it's a lot to sit for an hour in a meeting, but you all are extremely engaged. We still have over 130 people on the call. So just thank you all for not only being here and being present and engaged in the process. Next, we have um, Tanisha. Is Tanisha P on the call? Tanisha P. Okay, we'll go down the list. April M. Is April M here? I feel like I'm calling, doing roll call <laughs> for class. Is April M here? I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. 
Okay, so I just I have two questions. Are we going to have fees and then are we going to have SOLs? Great questions, April. Who would like to jump in with that one? I, on the, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just gonna say on the uh, the fee schedule, uh, we are looking at that very carefully. There, the, there are going to be some fees for high school students and specialty courses that will need to re, uh, remain because it is for, for example, cosmetology. They actually buy their cosmetology kit, but for uh, the other, the some of the generic fees. Uh, we're looking at trying to rearrange that. Uh, as far as the SOLs go, I think a lot of that's going to depend on how the virus goes and what the springtime role, you know, how things go. But I would anticipate uh, there would be some form of SOL testing as we move forward. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks for your question, April. In our next group, and we actually just have six more um, individuals that will come to the mic. And so in the next group, we have um, Yasmin or Yasmin, <clears throat> Ileana, and Olivia Brown. And so we'll start with Yasmin. Now, I don't have a last name, but Yasmin, if you are there, you can unmute your mic, share any questions or comments. Okay, next we have Ileana. Um, how will the tech centers take place online? Great. Awesome question, and I'm glad you asked, because uh, mm -hmm. that is one of my uh, worlds that we've been discussing. What we've asked, every, as you know, in the A centers, you have competencies. Uh, there are certain competencies that we're going to get knocked out up front because they can be done virtually such as your workplace readiness uh, skills. And as we move forward, that's where the teachers have been working to identify how to start teaching that competencies and when we have to bring people in for hand-to-hand -hand, uh, or hands-on uh, instruction. For instance, in your healthcare field, it is impossible to teach someone to turn a patient over in a bed virtually. So we will be doing small group uh, instruction uh, as we move forward on a based on the content that's being covered at that time. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Olivia Brown. Is Olivia still here with us? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, okay. we can hear you. So about the Chromebooks, um, do we have to use them or can we use our own computer sometimes? Hmm. That's a great question. And I had not thought about that. Um, do they have to use the Chromebooks that are administered through the schools? Do we have an answer for that? I, I can chime in on this one. I answered this question uh, just today. Um, I'm Andy, by the way, I've been sitting quietly in the back for a while. Um, we will be providing devices to every student preschool through grade 12. It's our suggestion that everybody use the devices that are provided by the school division because we'll be able to support those devices like tech support. We also know that our devices can uh, live up to the expectations of virtual learning. Um, is it really going to be a thing where we require a student to use our device? No, but when a student is using his or her own device, you kind of lose the ability for tech support from our perspective. And so you would, in some situations, you might be on your own with that, which could be frustrating. So we're going to suggest and encourage that folks use the HTPS provided device. But ultimately, if there's some reason out there that a student wants to use his or her own device, that's going to be okay too. We would just expect that it can um, do all the things that we would expect a, a Chromebook or a laptop to be able to do, and you'd be missing out on the opportunity for tech support from our own team. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. 
Next, we have Rylan Goins. And then after Rylan, we just have one more, um, one more person, um, Sophia Springle. So Rylan, are you still out there? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, this is Rylan's dad, Raymond. He's uh, bounced around in the back, um, <laughs> um, but we're present. Uh, our question was um, during the uh, estimated school time um, from 8 to 1235, uh, um, if uh, an additional break is required, um, will they be able to, you know, will your child be able to take that break? And um, the other question was um, sick days. If your child is sick, how does that actually work? Great questions. And what, what grade is Rylan in? Um, he'll be going to second grade. Oh, and second he's at Longdale okay. Elementary. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm so glad we have our director of elementary on the call. Me too. <laughs> I, I'm glad I'm here too. <laughs> I was waiting to see if uh, our elementary principal wanted to jump in. Um, I can tell you that we have intentionally looked at what's developmentally appropriate for a student and what they can handle. Um, what hopefully you noticed, all of our sharp uh, minds out there probably did the math very quickly and found out that entry's daily schedule is shorter the middle school and the high school. And that is on purpose. That's a design to be strategic for what is developmentally appropriate for our young, younger, particularly primary. And so we, in those uh, schedules, you will find specifically timed breaks that will proactively meet the students' needs. Because I, I know we've all been on this call for, you know, almost 80 minutes and we've all probably needed a break at this point in time. So we we know our children, students will need that. So um, we have breaks, we have actually recess built into the schedule. We even have a longer lunch shift. Um, so that's estimated at 45 minutes um, is our target for that. So, and they're strategically placed throughout the day. They'll still be participating in their, uh, what we call LAMPs, library, art, music, and uh, PE. So they'll have an alternating synchronous, asynchronous uh, movement, sitting down. There's gonna be a very nice balance for how our students are, are going to participate in their school day. For the second part of your question is, if you're sick, we don't expect you to participate in school. And uh, we'll use the same protocols that we've done before. Um, you know, you'll notify the school office and there'll be opportunities for students to catch up with that work. And, uh, and we'll be intentional and strategic about making sure that they have the ability to catch up on that instruction that they may have missed that day. Awesome. Okay, thank okay. you so much. So have Bye. Bye. Welcome. Bye. Bye. Oh, there he is. Awesome. Awesome. Good to see Bye. you, Ryland. All Bye. right. So, Sophia Springle. Sophia, are you still here? If so, feel free to unmute your mic. You are the last um, speaker that we have for this session. Um, so we hope that you are here and out there. Sophia Springle. Thank you for letting me have the opportunity to ask my question. So my question is that how did you all come to the decision of not letting kids go back to school in person? Because studies show that the virus doesn't really affect them and it's not really spread by them. And I understand that teachers are a part of it, but the economy, because parents won't be able to go back to the work with their kids still, <clears throat> excuse me, at home. So there, more money isn't going into the economy. So I think it'll be a lot safer for kids in general if there's going to be rising crime because of lower income and people not having jobs. It'll cause more harm than good to not let them actually go back in person. Thank you for your comments, Sophia. Who wants to jump in to respond? Well, I, I, yeah, I'll start and Ms. Control, she wants to add anything. We appreciate, um, again, you've been on a call and we appreciate um, your your comments and your insights. They're definitely appreciated. So the, the decision to start the 2020-21 uh, school year using the predominantly virtual format was made with the health and faith of our students, family, staff, and community in mind. Um, so we wanted to ensure that we did that with the um, information that we had available from our governor, from 
also our health um, officials. And so given that being the case, because of this global pandemic, as because our state and our locality continues to grapple with the pandemic, we felt that the first line online was the best option. We are aware of the challenges that it does uh, infect and impact our families. And that's why we're working feverishly as uh, Ms. Cole Johnson stated to try to have wraparound services to assist families with with care for their children, as well as hopefully our community partners and businesses will work with us to ensure that our parents can have opportunities to um, facilitate this learning for their children. So it was definitely taken into consideration um, for the safety of our students, our staff, our community, based upon the information that we had at the time. Um, and so making sure that we kept that at the forefront. Um, Ms. Consola, did I leave anything out that you wanted to add? Reverend Cooper, I believe you covered it. I just want to thank Sophia for the question and for her participation, um, everyone's participation. But I understand why you asked the question, Sophia, um, because from your perspective, when you think it's just about the students, that would make sense to you. However, we had to look at a lot of different factors um, and, and different data would make when we look, made the decision of to, that it wasn't as safe to come back in our buildings in the fall. We had to keep the health and safety of everyone in mind. So, um, you know, and, and if you'd like to watch what went into making that decision, please go out online to our six and a half hour meeting where it's right there for you. Should you like to know all the details about what went into that decision? It's there for you. But thank you for that question. That was a good one. Awesome. Thank you, Sophia. Wow, we have gotten through all comments that have come through. We've had several young people to share their opinions, um, provide their questions. We hope that you all are a bit more informed as we still have a few weeks to get through, there's still some more information that needs to be shared, but we truly hope that you all you will take away just some concrete information as we prepare to return online, do our first nine online. I, lo I love the tagline. Um, I would love to give, a, again, a special thank you to our school board members who really pushed to have this happen. Um, yes, it's a lot going on, but we know that student voice is front and center. And so um, thank you all for ensuring that this happened. Um, and then for our staff members who were here um, on the ready to respond um, to any of the questions. Um, school board members, if you want to say anything as we as we wrap up to students um, before we close out the town hall. Well, since I let Ms. Kinsella start, I'll, I'll start this time and let her finish. <laughs> Again, as you stated from the school board's perspective, we value the input, not just of our um, parents, our teachers, but also our students. Um, their voices are important. We want to always provide opportunities for their voices to be heard. And um, as Ms. Constella stated earlier, um, the other town hall that she was in as a pilot, um, there was some good information that was shared, but also some, some ideas that were received, which we're looking to implement. So just know that your input, um, your ideas, your voices are heard. And if we can, we will um, use the data that you've given us, the insight and information to make a positive effect and positive change on our division. And um, we look forward to um, you all um, learning and, and expressing yourselves and being successful the first nine online. You know it's going to be a challenge, but that's what it means to be a like student. But you're more than capable to rise up to the challenge, and we still expect great things from you. So stay safe and stay well. Um, Ms. Yes. Kinsella, did you want to share anything? Yes, I do. I just want to thank, I want to thank all the staff that participated today and everyone that helped us organize this. And just to um, thank everyone um, who submitted questions, participated, or just listened. Um, this is a valuable experience. And just to speak directly to the students, um, we are always available to you as board members. Our phone numbers are out online as our as are our email addresses so we're always available to you and it is our goal to um keep the school board member town hall format going as we move forward um and we do value your voice so if there's something that we need to know please do reach out and let us know um we we'd like to hear from you um and just really thank you so much adrian thank you for for being our moderator and keeping us on, on t well, getting us through all the questions. We ran over, 
but it was great to have so many questions. So just thank everyone. This was great. Awesome. Um, hi. So, um, for fifth grade, how are you supposed to do the Moody essay? Oh, that's a really specific question. Um, and I can't see the name. It's at the bottom of my screen. Um, what was the question? I'm sorry. The, the IB Moody essay for Moody Middle School. That was the question, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was the question. If you'd like me to answer, the, the answer is not what you're looking for. It is that we are still working on that, my friend, um, because typically that that is done in person and it's done in a secure environment. And uh, while we can do writing at a keyboard, typically that one was uh, where it could be monitored. So we're, we'll be looking for an opportunity. What I can tell you is that process will still remain. And I would love for you to continue to practice writing because that's the real preparation is not how it's going to happen, but what content are you going to be able to share that shows your thinking and that shows that you're ready for um, that type of environment in that program. Awesome. Okay, Thank please. you for... Thank you for closing us out with that last question and, and jumping in there to get it answered. Um, I'm sorry, so you have to jump in really fast if you don't mind. I've been on two of these sessions. I still haven't been able to ask my question. I really need to ask it. For students with IEPs or other special learning needs, how are they going to get the special assistance that they need? Hi, Rebecca, and I'm sorry if we didn't get to you. I know that we, um, and I'm not sure if you got the link for the sign in, we try to go in through that way. So our apologies if we didn't. And I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you because, because you're muted. Um, but what I'll share is we actually have an upcoming, our exceptional education department on Tuesday at 10 a.m. They are hosting just conversations. We have a lot of questions that are coming up through exceptional education. So Tuesday at 10, very similar format but we're gonna have experts from Exceptional Ed who will be on the call sharing out what those updates are and then we'll be answering any specific questions. Um, what I would love to do is if you can, and I'm, I'm talking out to staff and hopefully you can, you can hear me, if we can get your email, I will make sure that you get the information for that on Tuesday and the direct link because a lot of your questions could very likely be answered there. And I'm sorry, you're, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. I have a question. My brother... And, and I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still talking to Rebecca to make sure that she heard my Okay. Statement. I'm, 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 no, my keep, mine keeps automatically muting again for some reason. Okay. Well, I had put in to re, just to, so that you know, I did put in a request to ask questions in the first session and in this one both. Okay. Um, but... Um, who do I email so that I can make sure that I get information concerning the meeting next Tuesday? Of course, that's going to interfere with, oh, I can't do it next Tuesday because I have a staff meeting call then at okay. 10 o'clock. So well, this, this how else would we'll I be do. able to get information? This is what well, we'll do. I'm going to have a staff member to drop my email in the chat for you, and I'll connect you directly to our director of exceptional education because I understand the, 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 the urgency. So we'll make sure... You're on mute. I'm talking, and look, I'm saying you're on mute, and I'm on mute. It what keeps I jumping was, into mute for some reason on I all of us. So, okay. My mic. But my email is in the chat, and so just email me. Just say, just talk to you. I'll make sure to connect you with our director of exceptional education, and we'll get those questions answered for you as soon as we can. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. So, you um, know, I know there are questions people who are Excuse popping me. in, but we have, to, we have to wrap up the town hall, but this is what I'm going to suggest. So when we made the public announcement, there was a link for questions that have come in. These were questions that we didn't all get to today, but feel free to drop your questions or comments there. Our school board members and our school leaders have access to that. And so really a lot of your questions will help to drive some of the FAQs that we will need to be providing for parents and families and students over the next few weeks. Um, we thank you for being here today. There were, you know, just as many folks here earlier. And we have one more that's going to highlight Mrs. Alicia Atkins out of the Verona district. It's towards the end of the month, though. So it's August 31st, August 31st at 10 a.m. 
hopefully we have a lot more answers for you all then. Um, but again, if you enjoyed today and if you want to come back, if you have further questions, you can join us online August 31st at 10 a.m. and or you can submit questions through the link that's on the social media and what we use to advertise this. I just want to say thank you all for your time and attention. The young people have warmed my heart today. Seeing you all's faces is exactly what we miss about school. So thank you all for making time to be here. And I know with your input and your insight, school will kick off in an amazing way in September. So. Thank you all and have an amazing afternoon.